When I was a kid, one of the coolest things was when I got my first little transistor radio. It was blue and it had an antenna that you'd pull out. At night, I'd listen to it under my covers. Usually, I'd fall asleep with it on and it would be dead in the morning. My point is that at that time, I could have never known that I'd be standing with you here, thanking one of the key inventors who made me spend most of my first communion money on nine volt batteries. The advent of radio gave sound a brand new stage. 615 for News of the World Today. Early radios became the centerpiece of households and a portable novelty for people on the go. There are several people credited with the evolution of radio. Names often mentioned are David Sarnoff and Lee DeForest. So radio does not have an inventor. No, it's a really long and tangled story. It's impossible to unravel everything. But at the Henry Ford Museum, this radio is among the pieces of sonic technology that help tell a story of another man who also belongs in the pantheon of American inventors, Edwin Armstrong. Kristen Gallerno is the curator of communications and information technology at the Henry Ford. What we're standing in front of is Edwin Armstrong's first portable radio. Uh, right here, well, this I don't, thing. I don't see it. I'm looking yeah. for a portable radio and I don't see it. It has a handle, come on. <laughs> okay, so Edward Armstrong must have been a really strong guy to be able to jog with this. Yeah, I think it weighs probably about 50 pounds. If you too are questioning the portability of this radio, remember many innovations started big, such as the computer and the mobile phone, and were downsized over time. Edwin Armstrong was an electrical engineer and an inventor, and he really made some of the most amazing advances in radio. He's especially well known for three things in particular, something called the regenerative circuit, something called super heterodyning, and FM or frequency modulation, which is really the backbone of FM radio. This particular radio, which was made in 1923 by Armstrong, is actually the very first portable super heterodyne radio. A really basic idea of what heterodyning is, is it's the mixture of low frequency and high frequency radio waves to make a new kind of radio wave, which is very sensitive and selective. This new, more powerful type of radio wave meant more clarity for the listener and it could reach longer distances, and by extension, more people. So this radio was actually created by Armstrong for his wife, Marion, and they took it with them on their honeymoon. So there are these great images of them sitting on a beach listening to this portable radio. It had a compartment for a battery, and you could take the horn off, and you can close it up. It looks like a suitcase, and it's even got a handle. Edwin Armstrong died an early death in 1954, after years of stressful patent battles. But that was not the end of his story. His wife, Marion, was his champion, and she continued to fight her husband's court battles and made sure his name was etched in radio history. Ultimately, Marion is the person who decided to preserve Armstrong's legacy. She actually donated this radio to the Henry Ford Museum after his passing. And what is this? This is just a horn. It helps to amplify the sound. Did he steal it from a ship? It looks like you could, yeah. <laughs> And I bet when he gave it to his wife, he had flowers stuffed in here. I hope so. That would have been nice. <laughs> that would have been great.